Markets are continuing to unwind ahead of the Fed meeting and inflation or uh, interest rate hike tomorrow uh, to help tame inflation. So let's take a look at what's going on here with the markets today. Um, and again, like I always say, you want to watch how the markets uh, close the day out and what the momentum into the close looks like. Markets are down a little bit, uh, 0.73 on the Dow, 1.31 on the S&P, and 2% on the NASDAQ at about 2.30 Eastern Standard Time. Markets have been from flat to down pretty much all day, but <clears throat> we're going to jump right in. Of course, earnings, uh, this is earnings season, and a lot of companies reporting this week, and then we have the GDP coming out this week that will probably confirm the debate of technical recession versus recession. And, uh, you know, Janet Yellen came out and said, we're not in a recession. Biden came out and said, we're not in a recession. And there is a, you know, technical definition that's largely followed that, you know, two consecutive quarters of negative GDP is a technical recession. And the official definition of a recession by the NBER, which is the um, National Bureau of Economic Research, a research firm, uh, defines recession as, and this is who, you know, the government and everybody hangs their hat on their definition, a significant decline in economic activity that has spread across the economy and lasts more than a few months. Kind of like we talked about when you start to see mass layoffs, when you start to see companies closing, you know, things like that, that is more of what indicates a recession. And the issue with the uh, recession call right now from government officials is that there's still too many jobs being created. There's too many jobs available for uh, the limited number of people, two to one, basically jobs open versus people looking and things like that. So those are the things that the government is looking at and saying, hey, if we have this many jobs that we're creating. Uh, we can't possibly be in a recession because, again, mass layoffs and companies going out of business generally uh, are what is looked upon as being in an actual recession. So, you know, splitting hairs there. But right now, I mean, I don't think the companies in a, our country is in a deep recession. Obviously, a technical recession. Earnings are reflecting and forward guidance are reflecting that consumers are cutting back because of inflation. And inflation is worse than anything else. That's why the Fed has to act. They have to act boldly and they got to keep getting after inflation. And that's why tomorrow they will most likely, it's not 100% definite, but most likely we'll go ahead with 75 basis points. I don't expect a surprise 100 basis point rate hike. They have not indicated that they would do that. They could, uh, but that would definitely um, that would definitely get a reaction, a negative reaction from the markets on that kind of a move. They're definitely not going to do 50. I mean, it's not 100%, obviously, but they would they would lose. I mean, that would just be it for the Fed if they did a 50 basis point rate hike. So they they're uh, pretty much all of the consensus is 100 percent that they're going to do a 75 basis point uh, rate hike and very little, if nobody expecting 50 basis points. Now, there is some consensus that they're going to go and drop back to 50 in September. Um, and that's not likely if inflation is still a problem, which it probably will be. As you know, rents are still going up. House prices are still going up. Food is still going up. Gas has come down, but not significantly enough to really impact an inflation print. So we'll just have to wait and see. But uh, right now, it doesn't look like it's cooling off anytime soon, especially going into the fall and um, you know, getting into the season where energy prices are going to be a big deal. This is Shopify was down 40% uh, today on um, layoffs and the tech sector is you know, going through mass layoffs. Well, actually it's 20%. I'm sorry, it's down 20%. Uh, it might've been Snapchat I'm thinking of that was down 40% yesterday. Let's take a look at Snap uh, on earnings and revenues. And I believe it was Snap. Yeah, let's look at Snap right here. Yeah, Snap dropped 40 something percent. Shopify is down 20 something percent. So Walmart was down. So earnings is taking its toll. And we'll take a look at the dailies here. Take a look at Bitcoin continuing its, you know, plateau area. I went sideways consolidation before the next leg down, just, you know, marching along with the markets, waiting for the Fed results. Here's the Dow kind of doing its thing like it's been doing. Nice little bounces ahead of the Fed and then drops into the Fed rate hike. There's the NASDAQ dropping more than the Dow. s and is right behind it. So just kind of continuing along. The real question is, will the markets break this previous low? So it's been lower highs, lower highs here, lower lows. 
So will the markets come and take out these previous lows here? That's what we're going to be looking at as the Fed makes its move and the markets react to it. That's the key right there for all the markets. Are they going to take out those previous lows? Let's take a look at Bitcoin. Same thing here. Obviously, Bitcoin's low for this cycle comes in right here at that 17, 9, 18,000 range. And if, uh, like we've been talking about, if Bitcoin can hold that range, then it might just find its bottom here for this cycle and wait it out to see what inflation looks like, what uh, recession potentially looks like, and any other issues in Ukraine, things like that. Those are the headwinds that we've been talking about for the economy, for uh, risk assets all along have been, you know, the war in Ukraine inflation, potential recession, lockdowns in China, supply chain constraints, things like that that are putting pressure on the economy and artificially low interest rates now that the rates are going up and supply chains in China have opened up a little bit, you know, costs are coming down in housing and things like that, but the home builders are still under pressure because they're not selling units and they're having to discount prices and give away incentives. But again, this is all just the bear flag action, consolidating on each level, waiting uh, to see what the Fed decision is going to be. So we are just going to have to wait and see. Nobody knows if the price will break this or not. We don't know what other liquidations are out there waiting to happen. Of course, we know Elon Musk sold. We know the miners are selling and the lower the price goes, the more the miners have to sell. And we've been watching daily averages. We're back below the 50 and, and on Bitcoin, back below the 200, never able to you know claim, completely claim the 200. Then the interesting thing is you have this cross getting ready to happen between the 50 week and the 100 week. What has happened in the past when that cross happens is generally you can look at that in the past and that's kind of when the bottom was kind of indicated and markets turned around and rallied from there. But again, this was a different global macroeconomic cycle. Same thing here. When these averages crossed, that kind of indicated that there was a bottom that was kind of put in in the markets. Uh, so this could be an area where Bitcoin could find a bottom at the lower end of this range. It's definitely going to go back and test that tomorrow when the Fed makes its rate hike. Uh, kind of no, no, no real doubt about that. Uh, of course, you never know for certain. You never know 100% what uh, the markets are going to do. But most likely, it's definitely going to come down and test this lower range. At the very least, these uh, bounces have been retraced 100% each time in this environment. And, you know, this environment is somewhat different, right? Here's something we haven't looked at in a while is the Gaussian channel. We can look at historical markers and, you know, technicals and patterns and charts and things like that from the past. But this is a very different environment. You don't have the liquidity supporting the markets and propping it up. Bitcoin benefited from $2 trillion worth of liquidity. The liquidity cycle has changed. It's unwinding. So the question is, you know, will it follow any of this past you know, past cycle performance uh, on the Gaussian channel whenever it turned red. It stayed in the red for a number of weeks. Uh, it dropped down below about, we've looked at this before, it dropped down about 39%. And I think we are well below that right now. From the bottom of the channel, it wicked down, but closing in the 40, 47% range. The market overall is down, um, I believe it's 70%. Let's take a look at that here. Overall correction from peak to wick low, that was a 74% correction, which is in line with uh, past corrections that we've seen. The last one was 2018. That was a 84%. So let's say it drops another 10% and gets down to 84%. And that puts it down to that $10,000, $11,000 range. And there are... Uh, there is a lot of technical confluence because that is your previous uh, range highs before the bull market. And there's a lot of support in that area. So uh, there doesn't seem to be much other than this area here that we've been looking at that's going to support the market before it drops down to these levels into that 10, 11, $12,000 range, between 10 and 12. So right now you have between 18, where we're at now, 18 and a half, 19. Uh, where you have some sort of support. Let's kind of look at it on the daily, see if there's any more in there. Yeah, probably this area here around that 15, 7 to 19, 8. So that could be your next range area right there. So if, if Bitcoin does break this last 17, 9, it'll probably range down to about 15 and a half, like we've been talking about, and range in there between 15 and 18 and kind of ride it out. 
to see what the next Fed decision looks like, what inflation continues to look like, and what uh, recession uh, calls potentially look like and what the real recession really looks like if we start to see mega layoffs and companies closing and really cutting back and you know consumers continuing to cut back on their spending and real, real negative growth or decline in revenues for companies. So these are the things I'm looking at. Tomorrow is the day. We will know what the Fed's going to do and we will see how markets react. Until then, all we can do is sit tight. I'll see you in the next video.